the story of the weekend, I think, is Terrence Shannon Jr.'s return to the Illini program after being suspended by uh, Illinois following his arrest tied to a warrant detailing a rape charge. The fifth-year wing pursued and obtained a temporary restraining order that was granted on Friday. Illinois immediately reinstated Terrence Shannon to the team. He did not start on Sunday against Rutgers, but he did lead the team onto the court, came off the bench, played 28 minutes in an 88-63 win over the Scarlet Knights. Terrence Shannon received a nice ovation from the crowd when he checked into the game with 17:36 remaining in the first half. Before we discuss it, here's what it looked and sounded like. Brad Underwood, here comes Terrence Shannon. Quincy Carrier at the line for the Illini, shooting two. Dead leg. Uh, what'd you make? Keep this simple to start. Of Illinois using a man who was arrested for rape less than a month ago against Rutgers on Sunday. And what'd you think of the reception he received from what seemed like an adoring crowd? Yeah, it was an adoring crowd. That's not really that much of a surprise. Um, we've got a we've got a situation here in men's college basketball that is unquestionably uh, uh, just a tad uncomfortable here. And there there is no uh, there is no simple solution right now because we have no resolution to this this matter overall. I will I will mention something off the top here uh, to give a little more context to how we even got to this point. So uh, agree or disagree, I'm just going to give you the straight facts on why we got to the point on Sunday where uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. was allowed back into the lineup. Um, as far as the university was concerned, then we can get into whether or not uh, Brad Underwood and that, that athletic department um, should be playing him. So when Terrence Shannon Jr. got indefinitely suspended per university policy because he was arrested um, after an accusation of rape, um, at that point, Terrence Shannon Jr. had attorneys and they determined to take this to the courts because they felt as though his uh, his personal rights had been violated. Um, I believe it's the 14th Amendment. Let me be clear. I am not a constitutional lawyer. Nor will oh, I, I thought you were. Not even close. I will not try to pretend to be one on this show. I'm just telling you what and talking to some legal experts how this has been explained to me as of late. So what they did was they went to this judge in Illinois, Douglas County judge, and they basically said, listen, he has had specifically because he is a high profile athlete. He has he has an accusation against him and he has not been proven guilty of this yet. And because he has a limited window uh, because of who he is and where he plays, uh, Illinois is not allowing him to pursue um, potential earnings that could be lost as a result of this very serious allegation. Uh, so the school uh, should not have taken that right away from him. It was a civil complaint, not a, not criminal, not attached to the criminal case. And so the judge looked at this and on Friday said, I agree with this argument, uh, Terrence Shannon Jr., because he has not he has not actually gone before. A grand jury has not indicted him. He has not had to stand before a judge yet and say uh, plead guilty or not guilty. None of that has actually happened yet. The judge, from a civil standpoint, said, I'm going to grant you the temporary restraining order. Illinois should not have indefinitely suspended you based on the circumstances of the case right now. And it's because he is such a high-profile athlete. The way it was explained to me by Mitch Gilfillan, who is a former college basketball assistant and now is a working lawyer, if this had been someone who was a bench player anywhere else this pro this temporary restraining order probably would not have even applied but it is specifically because of who Terrence Shannon Jr. is that from a civil standpoint he was then given the TRO then you get into the matter of of whether he should be playing or not that's a whole other can of worms that we're obviously going to get to here um the Illinois you know treatment that he got it's not terribly surprising to me the poll question to start the show here is are you okay with Terrence Shannon Jr. returning to play for Illinois because as we even go with this, I see I see 
cases being made in the chat on behalf of both of this because um, one person is saying Illinois not allowing Shannon to play and then him being found innocent is equally horrifying to him playing and being found guilty. Both of those are true. This is not an easy situation. It's obviously very tricky. Um, he has a scheduled hearing in about a month. And if we get to that hearing, then we might know whether or not he is actually going to face a formal charge. Will a grand jury find enough to indict him here? Um, I know Illinois fans listening and watching are all too familiar with the case because they've read every single thing about it. But it still strikes me as a, as a bit awkward, to put it lightly, that uh, that he was playing on Sunday, considering the backdrop of, of everything that's tied to him in the case right now. And, the, and to be clear, the allegations against him. I... Um... Regardless of whether the temporary restraining order should have been granted or not, I disagree with the ideas that have been trotted out. Like the judge quite literally um, determined that Terrence Shannon Jr.'s livelihood on some uh, level is being um, irreparably harmed by this suspension, right? And 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 so you undo the suspension until he can have his due process. That's the idea behind this in, in you know the simplest of terms. I would argue that the suspension is not what is doing irreparable harm to him. You know what I think is doing irreparable harm to him? The fact that he was arrested for rape. That's why he's falling off of mock drafts. It's not because he's not playing basketball the past few weeks. It's because he's been arrested for rape. Because he was accused of something by a woman and law enforcement officials investigated it and decided we're going to pursue this. We're going to arrest this person for rape. So I just disagree with 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 the the premise. I don't believe the suspension is what's doing the harm. The, 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 the arrest for rape is what's doing the harm. And before we get too into this and boy, we're going to get into it. Okay. Um, I do want to start by saying or continue by saying. I, uh, I obviously have no idea whether Terrence Shannon did what he's accused of doing, right? Just like Norlander is not a um, constitutional scholar, I am not an investigator of sexual assaults. I don't know if the charge is valid. I've read everything there is to read. I've talked to people familiar with the case. Any, At least from my perspective, and Norlander, please disagree if you feel compelled to, um, I've talked to some people and anybody telling you it's clear what did or did not happen on this night is probably out over their skis just a little bit. Would you agree with that? It's I, I, I personally, I would, um, as I, I, I tend to give the benefit of the doubt to victims, alleged sure. victims in this kind of case. And we need to treat this, uh, an accusation, an allegation of this kind of matter, um, you, you know, it, it would be foolish to just uh, take one side or the other, at, particularly at this stage of the case when there's still so much to be determined. That's my point. Um, these situations are often complicated. This one seems to be complicated because on one hand, you have exactly um, what you just hinted at, which is um, a woman has accused Terrence Shannon of violating her with his hand. And there is a theory by some in this country, and this is what you were hinting at, um, that it is very important to always believe women when they accuse men of sexual assault. Always. That's the word people use. Always believe women. I say this as respectfully as I can say it. I'm not trying to row anybody up. Logically, that just makes no sense because what that purports is that no woman has ever falsely accused a man of sexual assault. And that's obviously untrue. All right. Studies do show that it's uncommon for a woman to falsely accuse a man of sexual assault. But it's not non-existent. That does happen. And it's important to remember that as we discuss the situation, while also recognizing, because here's the other side of it, it is possible a young woman spent Sunday afternoon watching a man she says raped her get a standing ovation during a basketball game. All of this is ugly. Yep. And I just want to make sure that's clear right from the jump. I don't know what happened. So everything else I'm going to say today um, should not be considered a judgment about whether Terrence Shannon is innocent or guilty of rape or a good guy or a bad guy in general. I don't know. The only thing I do know is that Terrence Shannon has been arrested because there was a warrant for his arrest for rape. This isn't merely an accusation. It started as an accusation. 
but then law enforcement officials investigated it and concluded they believe there's enough evidence to issue a warrant for his arrest because they believe he raped a woman. He's been booked. He has court dates on the calendar. And Illinois has a policy that automatically triggers a suspension when a player is arrested and booked, not just accused, but arrested and booked for all intents and purposes, charged with this type of crime. That's why he was initially suspended. So I think it's pretty brazen um, for Illinois to then run Terrence Shannon out there under these circumstances just because he got a temporary restraining order. Because after talking to multiple attorneys about this in the past, I was left with the understanding that a temporary restraining order um, does not force Illinois or any other school facing these types of situations to do what Illinois is doing. Now, let's stop here for a second. Mm -hmm. Norlander, obviously, the temporary restraining order is what triggered Illinois reinstating Terrence Shannon to the program. Yeah. I get that. But no TRO, far as I know, requires Illinois to actually let Terrence Shannon lead the team out of the tunnel, play 29 minutes on the Big Ten Network, even get into the game for a second. Do you have a different interpretation? No, I, I don't. And... This is where uh, Josh Whitman, the athletic director, Brad Underwood, the coach, um, we will see how the story develops. The, it, this could lead to a situation where Terrence Shannon Jr. is found uh, not guilty. There, it, maybe there might not even get to a point where there's even a grand jury that can indict him or it goes the exact opposite way. And he is. We don't know how this is going to end. But I would I would suggest that in playing him, you are opening yourselves up not just to obvious criticism, but potential uh, real significant um, backlash and consequence down the road if it does not go this way. I have not talked to Brad Underwood about this case. Frankly, he wouldn't even talk on the record about it. I wouldn't think anything beyond more than what he's comfortable talking about in the press conference. And frankly, he's going to default to his AD here. Um, but having covered the sport now for a decade and a half plus, and this is far from the first, unfortunately, far from the first instance we've seen where a player has been accused of something. Now that the tenor in 2024 versus what it was 10, 12, 14 years ago is obviously different. Um, I would I would be led to believe that they that the people at Illinois believe that Terrence Shannon Jr. will ultimately be found not guilty in this. Um, otherwise, they're incredibly stupid. You would be so stupid to play him under these current circumstances if you thought there was a halfway decent chance this was going not going to go Terrence Shannon Jr.'s way and he was going to indeed be found guilty of the crime that has been alleged against him. Uh, but even even short of that, Parrish, uh, to play him and to play him so quickly and maybe even using the TRO is a little bit of a a little bit of a cover. And it's you know to be clear, the reason why he saw it was why I explained it before. It is not criminal in, in nature. It is more about uh, who he is at this time in his life as he's trying to get ready to go and play in the NBA. Um, just, yeah, it's obviously an uncomfortable scene, an awkward scene. Uh, Illinois fans, I know you're you're all in on your guy here, but if it was someone else in the Big Ten, would you be feeling the same way? Of course not. Get out of here. Like, if, if, if you were playing, who is Illinois' biggest rival in the Big Ten? Uh, well, it's gotta be Indiana. I think. Okay. They're playing Indiana and I don't even want to put this type of allegation on the name of an Indiana player. That's not fair. Somebody clip it and have fun with it. But Indiana player is, um, arrested. There's a warrant. He's booked. It's rape. All right. Indiana suspends him for a few weeks. Guy goes out and gets a temporary restraining order and is, um, given a standing ovation by Indiana fans. When he checks into the game at assembly hall, you're an Illinois fan sitting at home on Twitter. What you tweeting? What you tweeting? Then shut up. You know how you feel about this up until it's your guy. And again, I'm not making any judgments on innocence or guilty. I'm just saying people don't play under these circumstances. You ready for this? Dead leg. There was a million games on Saturday, games on Sunday, games on Friday, games all last week, bunches of them. You can look at the schedule if you want to. Name me the other power conference school, and I only frame it this way because like, there could be some dude um, ranked uh, on a team that's 333rd in the country, and he's actually facing a rape charge, and I just don't even know he exists. Do you know another power conference school that was run onto the court, let out onto the court this weekend by somebody who is uh, Honestly, no. less than a week, less than a month, rather, um, removed from being arrested for rape. Do you know anybody else playing I, under these I, circumstances? I, yeah, obviously not, no. Arterio Morris was charged with rape at Kansas. They kicked him off the team in the preseason. 
Nobody else plays under these circumstances. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And the I and what some Illinois fans will tell you is that, well, you know, what are you going to do? It's a temporary restraining order. You don't have to play him. You do not have to play him. As I've said previously, there is no federal judge who can alter or influence Brad Underwood's um, rotation. Uh, historically, coaches are able to give minutes or not give minutes to anybody for any reason. No TRO requires Illinois to put Terrence Shannon into a game or to let him run out there and lead the team onto the court. Those are those are decisions Illinois is making. So I'll just default to the um, statement the athletic director released on the day that Terrence Shannon was arrested. He said, we take these types of allegations and charges seriously. All right. Well, you didn't today. I mean, you didn't today. You did, you did when he was arrested, I believe it was late December. But today you did not have to play him and you chose to. He is still accused of the exact same stuff, still facing the exact same charges he was faced with in late December. You did not have to play him today and you chose to. That's a decision. If you're comfortable with it, that's fine, but let's call it what it is. Yeah. And now we'll have to see if this case gets a next stage in terms of the allegations against him becoming an actual charge, uh, which could well require a grand jury to uh, find enough to to indict him. That is scheduled for as late as, I believe, February 23rd. That's a full month from now, and we'll see how the uh, this story, I guess, progresses from here, or if it doesn't. We might, we might have a non-update between now and then. Um, we'll have to uh, wait and see. The, the, the poll question on this episode and the live chat on YouTube was, are you okay with Illinois playing Terrence Shannon Jr. under these current circumstances? It is 53% no, 47% yes. This does seem to be... Uh, and the poll results there obviously reflect that. It is a, an, an issue where people are on both sides of this because there are some who will say you could be falsely a, accused of something. And this case, if it ever went to trial, will take six, eight, 12 months. could take two years to wrap up. Should someone that could be innocent in a situation like this have their ability to be just taken away from them by a charge that could be entirely false? You know, the, So the people that are, that are coming down on behalf of Terrence Shannon Jr. are saying... Um, innocent until proven guilty. Although, to be clear, that has nothing to do with whether or not you should be playing basketball. That's the thing that's, stupid that's, sports that's, fans that's, say that's, every time something like this comes up, but it's always a stupid thing sports fans say. Yes, yes. Um, innocent until proven guilty um, is what will keep you from being sentenced to prison. It does not keep you on a basketball court. Stop right. being dumb just because you have a Twitter account. So that's uh, that's where that's where we are on this. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, – not not an easy one here for sure. And to to me, the decision. I put it this way: if they had decided to sit him, at least in the short term, after so soon after the TRO, um, exercising a bit more caution wouldn't have been the worst thing, in my opinion. But he's back, he's playing, and they are going to ride with this moving forward. And again, this is a presumption on my behalf, but I'm just looking at where everything is right now. Um, Someone uh, even in the chat mentioned this. The AD specifically has a law background. Uh, I will be under the working assumption until uh, the AD says otherwise that I, I have to believe he thinks that Terrence Shannon Jr. will ultimately uh, wind up not being prosecuted under this, and that's why they're taking this chance. That's fine, but when they released the statement, they didn't say, we have a policy that says when somebody's, um, you know, there's a warrant issued and somebody's arrested for rape, uh, then we decide to look into it, and if they get a temporary restraining order, then we'll look into it a little more, and if we think they're ultimately going to be found innocent, then we'll just keep playing them. Right. That ain't what they said. I know. On December 28th, they tried to stand strong. This is what we stand for at Illinois. And on Sunday, that came crashing down. If you're comfortable with it, it's fine. It ain't got nothing to do with me, but that's who you are. That's who you are. You're the school playing a guy who is facing, still facing a rape charge. He's not facing an allegation. This is an allegation that was made months ago and was investigated, and they brought it to the level where they felt it was necessary to issue a warrant and arrest him. If you're comfortable with it, that's what it is. Then that's fine. I mean, or it's not, but like, you know, just what I'm not going to get caught up in the bullshit that other people get caught up in. Like, well, what are you going to do? It's a TRO and innocent until proven guilty. Shut up. None of that makes any sense as it pertains to this situation. You didn't have to play him. You certainly acted like in late December, you wouldn't under these circumstances or anybody under these circumstances. But you decided to, perhaps because you projected as a first-team All-American. We'll leave it here. I'll ask you this question, then we'll go. No way to know for sure. But if Illinois' player that was uh, arrested for rape was the 10th leading scorer instead of the first, do you think he's played today?
No, for two okay. reasons. One, for obvious reasons, and two, he wouldn't have been given the TRO to begin with because he had his name, image, and likeness had no value. The judge wouldn't have seen credence into. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let me take it another step. Tenth leading score today at Illinois is granted a temporary restraining order after being charged with rape. Does he play today? I mean, I I can't read Brad Underwood's mind. I'm I would lean I would lean no in that case. I believe you think the answer is no as well. Yeah, yeah. I think he's playing because he's awesome. And sometimes being awesome at basketball is enough to make people overlook other things. It's a, that's a truth as old as time.